What's up? Welcome to the courtroom. I am Theo. And I'm Oj. And in this podcast, we tell stories about people's life, liberty, and property. Kikwentohan namin kayo about court rulings in a way that will make you understand jurisprudence like a nine-year-old. All persons before the order, Supreme Court of Justice, shall give their attention, for the court now is So join us as we delve into true crime, political controversies, and all things that the chismis every week. In this case, the incident happened in Balinkit Street, Malate, Manila. Dito, nagkoconduct ng routine foot patrol sila PO2 Roberto Soque, PO2 Alejandro Sepe, and PO3 Edilberto Zeta. Naka-assign sila lahat sa anti-illegal drug section ng Malate Police. One evening on December 29, 2007, around 9.15pm, habang nagpo-foot patrol sila, may narinig sila na lalaki na sumigaw. Putang ina mo! Di bang daan na ba to? Dahil doon, inaprehend nila yung sumigaw, which is si Ramon. His act daw kasi violated Section 844 of the Revised Manila City Ordinance, which punishes breach of peace. Sumigaw nga... lang? Oo. <laughs> kasi nga diba, naguhuramentado daw kasi si Ramon. So ayun, huli siya. And I feel af- for Ramon. And after siya hulihin, hinuli ka na dito. And after siya hulihin, he was asked to empty his pockets. And dito, na-recover ng mga police kay Ramon ang plastic sachet containing white crystalline substance suspected to be shabu. Kaya, kinonfiscate ni PO2 Soke yung sachet tapos dinala si Ramon sa police station. And then, pina-examine nila yung nakuhang uh, sachet and found out that it was indeed positive for methamphetamine hydrochloride. Ano? Ano ulit? Pwedeng isang beses na <laughs> Ang hirap kasing sabihin na eh. Pinractice ko pa yon. Or, shabu in short. Shabu. Hindi gusto ko yung isa. <laughs> well, because of that, Ramon was charged with the possession of dangerous drugs under Section uh, 11, Paragraph 3, Article 2 of RA 9165. In defense... Ramon denied the charge and gave his version of the incident. Sabi niya, on December 29, 2007, bandang alas 4 ng hapon, naglalakad daw siya along Balinkit Street para manghiram ng welding machine kay Paes Garcia nang biglang may lalaking lumapit at tinanong if siya daw si Ramon Goko. When he confirmed his identity, bigla na lang daw siyang pinusasa ng lalaki at nagpakilalang polis. Pinasakay siya sa sidecar at doon tinanong kung may dala siyang illegal na droga which he denied. He was then bought uh, brought binili. He was then brought to the to a precinct to be detained. While detained, PO2 Soke allegedly asked for 20,000 in exchange for his release. Eh binili nga. <laughs> so syempre naghanap yung asawa ni Ramon na si Amalia ng pera. When they were unable to produce the 20,000, tsaka daw dinala si Ramon sa Manila City Hall for inquest proceedings. So, meron tayong two versions of the incident from which the Supreme Court has to determine whether or not Ramon is guilty of the crime of possession of dangerous drugs. Although, sa case na to, hindi nag-focus yung court sa discussion of whether or not nasatisfy ba nung facts ng case yung elements of the said crime. Rather, the discussion delved more about the search and seizure that the police officers conducted in relation to Ramon's arrest. Why did the court emphasize this? Hindi kasi pwedeng basta-basta ka nalang aarestuhin okay. ng walang warrant of arrest. Kasi enshrined on our constitution ang karapatan natin against unwarranted intrusion by the government. Nakapaloob sa Section 2, Article 3, or our Bill of Rights, uh, enshrined on the 1987 Philippine Constitution, which states that the right of the people to be secured in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizure of whatever nature and of any purpose shall be inviolable, and no search warrant or warrant of arrest shall be issued except upon probable cause. To be determined person, uh, personally by the judge after examination under oath 
or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized. Ito ang provision ng Bill of Rights that protects us from warrantless arrest and unlawful searches and seizure. So, punta muna tayo sa warrant of arrest. Ibig sabihin ba, pag walang warrant of arrest, it automatically violates yung sinasabing right of the people to be secure as stated in the Constitution? Well, the general rule is yes. But, syempre, may exemption. There are three instances when a warrantless arrest is considered valid. Uh, one is in flagrante delicto. Ito yung huli sa akto ng paggawa ng offense yung aarestuhin ng mga polis. Second is hot pursuit. It is when an offense has just been committed and yung police officer has probable cause to believe based on personal knowledge of the facts or circumstances na yung taong aarestuhin niya yung gumawa ng krimen or offense. And lastly, is yung, kung yung aarestuhin is an escape prisoner or tumaka sa bilanggo. Itong tatlo lang yung exceptional instances na pwede kang arestuhin ng walang warrant. Now, tulad ng arrest, unlawful ang search and seizure if without a search warrant. It must be understood na yung police officer, hindi pwedeng basta na lang kapkapan ka dyan or mag-search without a warrant. Dapat meron, syempre. Pero hindi absolute yung rule na to. There are exceptions that make warrantless search valid. As per jurisprudence, the traditional exceptions are custom searches, searches of moving vehicles, seizure of evidence in plain view, consented searches, stop and frisk measures, and searches incidental to a lawful arrest. Yung last na exception, yung searches incidental to a lawful arrest is particularly significant to this case. Just to elaborate on this exception, para maging valid yung warrantless search, it should be incidental or associated to a lawful arrest. Take note, dapat lawful yung arrest. Kasi remember, if the arrest is unlawful, yung evidence na makukuha sa unlawful arrest na yon will be deemed inadmissible. Since it violates nga the people's right to be secure as enshrined in the Constitution. Tama. According kasi sa Section 3, Article 3 of the Constitution, any evidence obtained in violation of this provision shall be inadmissible for any purpose in any proceeding. Pag sinabing inadmissible ang evidence, meaning di siya pwedeng gamitin as evidence dun sa case. Kasi hindi yun inadmit or inaccept ng court. Bakit ulit hindi inadmit or inaccept ng court? Kasi nga, it violated our fundamental right enshrined in the Constitution. Kaya, inadmissible yung evidence na yun. This is commonly known as the exclusionary rule. So, punta tayo sa case ni Ramon. Di ba, he was arrested for breach of peace without a warrant. Afterwards, nagkaroon din ng warrantless search. And dito, may nakuha sa kanya na sa sashay of Shabu. Kaya nakasuan siya ng crime of possession of dangerous drugs. So, our question is whether Ramon is guilty or not of that drug-related crime. Before the court can resolve the issue of whether Ramon is guilty or not, they have to resolve first the issue whether the warranted search is valid. Kasi, again, if not valid, inadmissible yung evidence. But before that, kailangan muna din ma-prove if lawful ba talaga yung warrantless arrest kay Ramon. Bago natin masabi na yung warrantless search is valid since it falls under one of the exceptions which is a search incidental to a lawful arrest. Let's go! Connect-connect pala lahat. Yes. So, ito yung tanong. Lawful nga ba yung arrest kay Ramon? So, may dumigay pa. Sorry po. <laughs> una una, Warrantless arrest siya. Para masabi na lawful yung arrest sa kanya, dapat mag-fall siya sa isa sa mga instances of a lawful warrantless arrest. Ano ba to? Ako ulit. In ah, flagrante sige. delicto, hot pursuit, saka escape prison. <laughs> Parang nag <laughs> In this case, okay, that's bida, bida. Alam mo na ngayon kung ba't lagi akong nalilista. <laughs> so, in this case, mas close yung facts ng case sa uh, in flagrante delicto. Kasi... Merong presence ng police officer, si PO2, so okay. And the person to be arrested has committed, who is Ramon, 
is actually committing or is attempting to commit an offense which is yung pagsigaw nga na breach of peace daw. Under Section 5A, Rule 113 of the Rules of Court, yung apprehending officer before he arrest a person caught in inflagrante delicto, there must be a probable cause. And what is probable cause? It is the reasonable ground of suspicion supported by circumstances to warrant a cautious man's belief that the person accused is guilty of the offense charge. Specifically with arrest, uh, with respect to arrest rather, ito yung mga facts and circumstances that would lead a reasonably discreet and prudent man to believe that an offense has been committed by the person being arrested. Ibig sabihin, Bago hulihin si Ramon, dapat may probable cause muna yung mga police officers para masabi na lawful yung paghuli sa kanya. So, meron ba? Well, on record, PO2 Soke arrested Ramon for allegedly violating Section 844 of the Manila City Ordinance, which particularly penalizes the disruption of communal tranquility. So, to justify a warrantless arrest based on the breach of peace, dapat ma-establish na inaresto si Ramon after magkaroon ng reasonable assessment yung mga police officer doon sa situation mm-hmm. na indeed, a public disturbance is being committed. So, ngayon, ang tanong, may public disturbance ba? Eh, during the cross-examination, the counsel of Ramon was able to establish that balingkit Street is actually a thickly populated place with many people conversing with each other on the street. Meaning, maingay na sa lugar na yon in the first place. So, paano mo masasabi na yung pagsigaw ni Ramon cause a disruption of peace or tranquility in violation of Section 844 of the City Ordinance? Eh, Ramon naman was not making or assisting in any riot, afraid, disorder, disturbance, or breach of peace. He was not assaulting, beating, or using personal violence uh, upon the other. And the words he allegedly shouted, which is, Putang ina mo! Limang daan na ba to? Are not slanderous, threatening, or abusive. The ano ulit yung sinabi niya? Play <laughs> <laughs> mo na lang yung voice over. <laughs> So, the act could not have tended to disturb the peace or excite a riot considering that at the time of the incident, yung Balinkit Street was still steaming with people and alive with activity. Clearly, the testimony proves that there is no probable cause when the police officers conducted their warrantless arrest of Ramon. Kasi kung walang public disturbance na naganap, there is no ground for arresting Ramon. So, the court observes that these facts and circumstances could not have engendered a well-founded belief that any breach of uh, peace had been committed by Ramon at the time that his warrantless arrest was effected. All told, all told rather, <laughs> all told, <laughs> all told, <laughs> all told, <laughs> all told, <laughs> All, okay. told, uh, all told, rather, no probable cause existed to justify Ramon's warrantless arrest. Yun. <laughs> Totoo pa rin o. No? <laughs> <laughs> Totoo man na ang legality of an arrest shall depend upon the reasonable discretion of the police officer, the urgency of the situation, or the nature of the act or deed of the offender, yung authority to apprehend should not be exercised in a whimsical manner or else a person's liberty will be subjected to ubiquitous abuse. Mm. And uh, bilang law enforcers, they are expected to conduct a more careful assessment of the situation at hand. Kasi syempre, hindi blanket license ang pag-declare ng probable cause to suspend the liberty of anyone. But the duty to determine probable cause must be performed wisely and cautiously, applying the exacting standards of a reasonably discreet and prudent man and impelled by a higher sense of public accountability. 
So, yun nga, dahil nga unlawful yung pag-aresto kay Ramon since walang probable cause na hulihin siya for breach of peace, kasi nga, maingay naman din yung lugar sa so paano mm-hmm. naging breach of peace, yung warrantless search sa kanya is also unlawful dahil illegal yung process of search and seizure na ginawa kay Ramon, the product of that search and seizure, yung na-obtain na shabu, is inadmissible as evidence for being the proverbial fruit of the poisonous tree. Or, as already mentioned, also known as the exclusionary rule. Since inadmissible siya, ano pang evidence ang magamit against Ramon? Wala na. Finish na. Kaya naman, Ramon was acquitted from the crime of possession of dangerous drugs. If you guys like this audiogram, please listen to the full episode on Spotify or on your favorite podcast app where you can hear our insights on this case. Again, this is Oj and Theo leaving you with a reminder to always look back in history because precedent shall rule the future. Thank you for listening and we'll see you again in the courtroom. Bye!